You can also now watch Packard Pokes at on Atheism TV at youtube.com slash atheism TV and as always on youtube.com slash Packard Pokes at. Come to the live show and chat with us on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time on vonlive.tv slash Packard Pokes at. See you there. Do you really like Packard Pokes at and want to promote the show? Then go to cafepress.com slash Packard Pokes at. There are hundreds of items available, including hats, shirts, hoodies, and so much more. Every purchase from cafepress.com slash Packard Pokes at helps support the show. Your Packard Pokes at coffee mug is waiting for you. Do you want to stream Packard Pokes at on your iPhone or Blackberry? Download Stitcher free today at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. You're on in three, two, one. This is Packard Pokes at, and I'm poking at your news. Your news. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another fine edition of Packard Pokes at. I am your immutable and unmutable host, Packard Sonic. And joining us tonight from the far east coast is Joe Unseen. Packard. Yes, I could dance with you till the cows come home. On because- second thought, I'd rather dance with the cows when you came home. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. I'll remember the, your Christmas present this year. And- <laughs> oh, we're celebrating Christmas now, are we? <laughs> <laughs> All right, your birthday, but either way. <laughs> and join us from the far west coast is Connie Practical Magic. <laughs> we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Josephstan land, apparently. Uh, Josephstan. <laughs> oh, wait, that was probably offensive. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> and joining us also from the far east coast, our special guest host, Maribel Blue. Hi, everybody. And we have a wonderful show for you tonight. Before we get started, I want to say my deepest sympathies from behalf of everybody here at Packard Pokes at to the families that have that tragedy that happened out in Washington, D.C. over this week. All the lives that have been lost. And my condolences to those families. All right. Anyway, let's get on to our uh, first topic for this evening. Building a better future. Science and technology. There's a film out there. It's called Noah. No, I'm not talking about the guy with the little boat and thought he could shove 10,000 animals onto it. Talking about a short film that was made out in Canada. It's at, in, at the Toronto International Film Festival. It's a 17-minute portrayal of a teenager, the, the teenager Noah, and it's just all done on the computer. They're, they don't you know, take shots somewhere else else, but they're showing the relationship what happens to these people, the way they interact and so forth. Back in the 60s, people would say, or in the 60s and 70s, teenagers would get on the phone and their their whole lives would be the phone, revolve around the phone because this is the way they communicate. Teenagers today, they have the internet, they have Skype, they have access to their own phones or uh, cell phones and things like that. And this film was supposed to show the pitfalls of using social media to be involved with somebody else online. And to me, I, I think that's just another uh, just another scare tactic to show, you know, hey, relationships are fragile. Well, no shit relationships are fragile. It, it doesn't matter if there's technology involved or not. Joe, your thoughts? Yeah, I wish I'd gotten to see this. They only had it on YouTube for a few days. Mm-hmm. And uh, it yeah, got I just millions said, of people. I went to check it out today. It was uh, in private. Yeah, I looked for it today. I even tried to find, like, a mirror of it. And they had it on like the uh, the original production's website, but that was down too. No. Oh. So uh, yeah, but millions of people saw it before we didn't get to see it. Yeah. But yeah, being heavily invested in the internet, uh, as each of us are, can can be very consuming. Mm-hmm. And if you don't figure out a happy balance for yourself between the real world and the virtual world, you're you mean in the real world out trouble. there? <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> I, I I've been sitting here this whole time. What the fuck? You mean there's like I, outside stuff? <laughs> I have faint memories from years ago of this, this <laughs> fluffy green stuff on the ground and this blue light Fluff- in the sky. I don't know. A fluffy but, green uh, stuff. It sound, that sounds familiar. It was cotton candy, was. right? <laughs> oh, go ahead. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, Joe. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of looks like my Windows wallpaper, but yeah. <laughs> oh, that stuff. I know what you're talking about now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, I, I from what I've read about this video, it's about this guy who has a girlfriend named Amy and they're 
using a lot of different social media to keep in touch and it's just sort of like a whirlwind almost like an acid trip this experience of them talking to each other mm -hmm. through all these different digital mediums and uh yeah it's it sounds cool yeah it does <laughs> want to watch it <laughs> yeah i wish Wait. they would have left it up a little longer can i ask a question sure i i just want to understand what it is that we're talking about you're saying that two people are having a relationship via the internet right and never meeting uh, so I don't know the, no, if they'd they ever high meet. Schoolers that They're high schoolers, met. yeah. I'm sorry to interject, but they, yeah. I watched the movie just the other day. Oh, you got to see it? Oh, <gasps> yes, I did. I, uh, I got to I see it. Got Someone, to one of us got to actually watch it. I was going to see it, and I didn't. I apologize. I didn't download it because I could have sent it to you. It been oh, illegal. That's all right. Um, but well, no, your, what were your thoughts on that guy? high schoolers there, <clears throat> and he's going off to college, and she's basically, you know, going to be another year in high school, and. Uh, so they know each other. They see each other all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, but they also interact on the internet. I'm sorry. At this point, I guess I'm. Am I? The, did you see it, Packard? No, I, I went to go watch it today, and it was down. <laughs> I, and I, 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 <laughs> so I tried. I'm the only one who saw it. I know. Oh. That's okay. Oh. Don't worry about it. It'll be back um, after the show is done with, and we won't have the chance to talk about it. After it'll be back well, up anyway, tomorrow morning. <laughs> I, I, I'll back out at this point if you want me to. No, t me. please. You're the only one with knowledge on this. I'm just going by what okay, I've read. Well, um, what I found about this interesting is that I have seen the Internet play havoc on a few relationships. Mm. Um, not to put to find a point on it. Uh, I saw a marriage get, you know, with somebody who was in the military. And I thought, well, you know, this is really going to be a, a boon to this marriage because they can interact via Skype and, and Facebook and all of these things. It won't be like months and months and months of sending a letter, you know, mm -hmm. a snail mail. And there was something about being so connected and yet not seeing each other mm -hmm. that was really strange. And so it created some insecurities and jealousies. And the fact in, in the movie, Noah, what he does is he hacks his girlfriend's oh. uh, Facebook. And because he kind of, you know, he knows her. And all I get, this is my, this is my uh, name. You know, this is my password. And uh, he suspects, because she's saying at the beginning, I'm sorry. To, anyway, she says, I think. You're going off to college. I just don't want to be that girlfriend who tells you you can't go out and experience life. And their, in, oh, their a... uh, conversation gets cut off. And so he goes, to, you know, through the ur urging of a friend, he goes to her site, hacks it, and realizes that she's had these conversations with some guy. And he sees the picture of the guy, and he's wearing a Speedo. He's really handsome. He's, you know, and they're talking about pajama parties and this and whatnot. And he goes ahead and changes the relationship status on her Facebook and oh that's bold and he well you know he he yeah he does he hacks it and he does it really clumsily and then he wants to come back and later you find towards the end of the movie should i give it away i mean sure no one else is going to see it because guy, i said it private his friend is a gay is a gay guy oh. of hers you see and what i loved about this what i loved about this is that our fear of technology is pointless our fear of ourselves is what it really is about ah. you know it, it, i think i think this is about honesty with ourselves and honesty with other people but we always we we, we always have a certain amount of privacy mm -hmm. even with even within a married couple you know you have thoughts you, you would never move you would never act on mm -hmm. you know or maybe you would i don't know but what if everything was exposed what if what if everything that you wrote uh there there's so much pe there's so much that people put on things like Facebook and social media. Right. And I'm not sure that we're ready as human beings to evolve to that next step. I think that's what I got out of the film. Oh, okay. Well, you know, the thing but, is, I, I think personally, I mean, I, I understand what you're talking about there. Yeah. The well, um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Glad I was clear. <laughs> no, yeah, you were, you, know, you were clear. Now, your comment, though, about the uh, evolution, I mean, to mm -hmm. a point, to some point, I agree. To some point, I agree because technology is outpacing us, it, it, sociologically, yes, it and is. and um, it, it's we're, dealing. We're so we're, connected, aren't we? Right. Yeah, we're a lot more connected now than we've ever been in, in the last fifty years, even. And even by even by by telephone or telegraph, for you know, when we thought, oh well, this is the <laughs> pinnacle of how close we can be. We can just send a telegram, boom. But now we can see each other while we're talking, like you can see me right now. And people are, need time to have away from each other and 
privacy. And I agree with you. We need to, we do need privacy. But as far as the social aspects of it, that because we are so connected, we have such an easy way of connecting with other people. The the jealousy factor can be raised really quickly. It's yeah. it's very sad. I would hope that the example of it being high schoolers. Oh yeah, well was... you know this doesn't. High school is just a, a just a beginning ground for in marriages and so forth. You know because a, a lot of that stuff translates into into adulthood. And uh, some people, unfortunately, it does. Yeah. I, wait. I mean, well, there's the human experience, but at the same time, as adults, shouldn't we be able to move? Again, if we were all rational, mm -hmm. we should be able to move beyond just our base. I sound like Spock now. Beyond, <laughs> beyond our base uh, emotions and be able to talk about these things rationally and say, okay, look, what is it you really want out of this relationship? Mm -hmm. You know, I would expect this. That, that's the beauty of this movie. That's why I accept its premise because we're talking about high schoolers, you know, in the throes of hormones and, emo and emotions and relationships that last maybe three months, six months if you're lucky, you know. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that to me was like, okay, I get this, that it, it worked, but it is also applicable, you know, and I think that that's kind of sad because people should enter into relationships, serious, serious relationships. If you want to be committed, be committed. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then don't. But this is a conversation you have with the person you're with, not with some Facebook and not, you know, it, not with some lover that you have a clandestine thing with. If you're right. ready to be done, then just be done. Right. And be an adult about it. Right. Exactly. But, no, I no, I agree with you on those points. I, I have to agree as well. I need to say because I myself was having a long distance relationship not too long ago. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being a disaster because really? my jealousy kicked in. Ah. I mean, it wasn't only the jealousy that kicked in, but it was the idea that you know both of us were long distance we were four hours away from each other mm -hmm. and you know he was much younger than me <laughs> so of course uh. when you know when i see certain things on his facebook page i really think that facebook is the demon of of everything to bring to an end and uh, you know, it's unfortunate that the relationship ended the way it did. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a part to play in it. He had a part as well. And it really taught me a lesson about the younger generation. They're so into the phone and texting mm -hmm. and, and, and talking on Facebook. And I come from a different generation. I come from the generation, and of course, here I go disclosing my age, where... You know, when you called somebody, there was no answering machine. <laughs> to, <laughs> answer to machine? What's up. that? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And leave a message, you know, like after 10 rings, you realize, okay, the person is not home. You know, if you yes. wanted to play with your friends, you would make plans the day before and say, mm -hmm. okay, be outside at this time. So, oh, yeah. you know, yes. to be in, in that in that situation was not a very pleasant one. Right. Fortunately, no. we are friends today and we do talk. But again, we talk on Facebook. He has no phone. Mm -hmm. He refuses to get one. And, you know, at the end of the day, this is not somebody that I would want to be with anyway. Right. So that answers that question. Yes. No, I, I, I agree with you there. Long distance relationships are very difficult. I, I've had a few myself over the years and it's... It's very difficult because you don't know what – because you, you don't see them on a, a daily basis and then you're like – you don't know what's going on because we have the the advent of technology where we can reach out and touch anybody literally. Oh, well, not quite literally, but <laughs> we can reach out and connect with other people. And a lot of people can't handle that because they want to be the sole person in their life. So they – like you're you're supposed to pay attention to just me. And nobody else, because when there's a relationship, they, they think there's just you and me and nobody else counts. So we don't want you to have, I don't want you talking to anybody else. I, I went through this when I was married. I mean, it was it was like that. Uh, I, I couldn't have, it was very difficult for me just to have friends. My ex was allowed to have friends, but I wasn't for some reason. But hey. <laughs> Is it, it that was, always the case? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was allowed to have friends, but I wasn't. So hey, you know. It's, it's it's taken me a long time to gather the amount of friends that I have today, which is it cost me twenty nine ninety five a, a, a day. So uh, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> wow, that's 
<laughs> you're not kidding. <laughs> Joe, your paycheck will be in the mail. Just don't, just hang on, okay? Yeah, no, those are great points, uh, Maribel. The long distance relationships and whatnot. I mean, the, the jealousy factor is just very difficult to deal with. But anyway, uh, let's get on to our next topic for this evening. It's the Onion Radio News. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. There's beaches out there that have nudity <laughs> that's available to them. Yes, you can go to some beaches and there are nudity. <laughs> Over in Sweden, there was a man. He's 65 years old. He's out on the. He's out. He's on a nude beach, and then he starts doing what sometimes some guys just come naturally. And it's, I'm not talking peeing. He just kind of got a hold of it and started. Yeah, he basically well, he was doing what he was gave, gave himself. Show me the, again. I, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically called the old Sandy Handy. I, he was playing with himself. He was playing with himself, right? He was he was masturbating, is what it was. Like patty cake. He was playing patty cake. <laughs> He's doing the one man patty cake. Need a partner for that, yeah. Okay. He was doing the one man patty cake, and and this they, I didn't realize there was a name for this when you do this on the beach it's called the Sandy Handy <laughs> so it's apparently it's happened a lot well that's gotta hurt yeah uh, it rubbed things raw I would think anyway so he was arrested but they charged him with sexual assault but since he wasn't assaulted anyway he wasn't like aiming it at anybody he was like aiming it at the sea and they was like I was we, had, we were talking about this in the mean the sexual assault the, he was in the ocean when he was doing it he was like halfway up to his uh, thighs in the ocean there and he was doing this and I was like did the ocean come in and press charges you know <laughs> <laughs> those poor mermaids the poor mermaids and the fishies and the crabs and things it was like look at that oh my god I just can't handle it anymore no but because he was not doing this intentionally towards like children or uh some woman that just happened to be on the beach or whatever so they had to, they basically ended up passing a new law saying that you could masturbate on the beach so long as you know you're not doing it at anybody so and this is over like i said this is over in sweden now the funny thing is this is there's a, a group over there that just a couple months after this uh, the political party over there they wanted to make it illegal for men to pee standing up so it's okay to masturbate in public but as long as you're not peeing standing up hey you're you're fine (laughs) show your thoughts yeah peeing laying down doesn't work yeah (laughs) (laughs) they want you to sit down and pee you know basically (laughs) that's ridiculous it is ridiculous Um, i I think the problem here is that they charge him with sexual assault and as you said Uh packard he wasn't assaulting anybody um, and they couldn't get him for exposing himself because he was on a nude beach. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what the Swedish laws are, but here in the United States, uh, he would have been charged with committing a lewd act. Right. So uh, perhaps the Swedes need to rethink maybe not their national laws, but but simply their civil ordinances in the towns that have nude beaches. Right. You know, like if they're so concerned about someone masturbating on a nude beach and they don't know what to charge them with, make that illegal. Like, like exactly. Okay, you, you could go down there, you could take all your clothes off, you can have a good time, get sunburn on your dick, just don't rub one off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's bad enough getting that thing red, just doing that, but, you know, red in the sun, you know, then that you're just asking for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> He's 65 years old. I, I'm not mad, I'm just impressed. <laughs> really? I'm going to say thank you. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Connie, your thoughts? My thoughts are that, you know, they they have an interest. I I don't understand Swedish law. Yeah, and the fact that for this to be considered a crime, it would have been directed at somebody. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, what? Yeah. Uh, You know, again, we have to evolve. Uh, I I keep using that word tonight, but we have to evolve, I guess. You know, if we want to have places where people can be nude in public, Mm -hmm. we have to also agree that everybody wants to see that. Because I don't, I don't think I want to watch a sixty-five-year-old man masturbate. I don't want but to watch that. That's you know, like, the, no. You know the get funny thing is, get a room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know the funny thing is though, if it had been a woman standing out there on the beach masturbating, then I, then who would have? Uh, I don't think they would have uh, been calling the police. They'd probably going, "Hey, you know, can we that's get an a- interesting question?" Yeah, I think that women would call on that. No, but, uh, maybe men would not. No, uh, m- well, generally, I don't think other men would. No, I, but, but again. Yeah, no, it's it was more an indecent act, a lewd act, like yeah, lewd act, Joe yeah. said. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's just personally, I I don't problem. I have no problem with it. But I mean, if he was just 
he's standing there in the ocean, unless the ocean is going to come in and press charges, or the fish going to come in and press charges. <laughs> yeah, I would. I, I don't have. A, I don't have a personal problem with it. You could. You could sneak up behind him and narrate it. Like, <laughs> yeah, then the ocean says, "Yeah, you think that's something." <laughs> you think that's something? Take a look at this. Uh huh. Come up next to him. You think that? Whip that up. Oh yeah. Watch me do this. <laughs> So, <laughs> Let me know when you're about to finish so I can get out of the water. <laughs> sand, sand and salt water? I just think that sounds like pain. It does okay. sound like painful. It does. It does. Uh, Maribel, your thoughts? You know, I'm just thinking all sorts of things over here. I mean, if, if, it's, <laughs> if it's okay for him to masturbate on the beach, mm-hmm. it's kind of like I'm feeling like it's a domino effect because mm. if that starts to happen... You know, what if other people get turned on by seeing somebody else masturbate and then they kind of start doing it and then another person sees it and then they do it and so on and so forth. You mean we have a whole beach of people masturbating at one time? <laughs> wow! <laughs> that's a that, that's that's a that's the beginning of a porno movie. Dun, dun, yeah, dun, dun, dun. Exactly. So I that, I mean that's where like my mind trailed. I'm saying to myself, it it's like, you know, somebody like yarns and then you see them doing it and you do it. <laughs> You really, you know, you're not, you're not tired or you're not I'm, hungry, or whatever. But you saw the other person doing it, and for some reason, the feeling comes over you, and you're like, Rrr. so I, I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, you're gonna be at the beach. <laughs> what if a good-looking guy is like masturbating, and that turns you on? Then you're gonna sit there, and you know, you're gonna want to masturbate along with him. And if another woman sees that and she's getting turned on, she's gonna want to masturbate. I'm just thinking that that's what's going to happen. Yeah. You're just going to have a total masturbating beach. It's a masturbating beach party! <laughs> Whee! <laughs> Somehow I don't think Annette Funicello would sign it for that. <laughs> <laughs> it gives a new meaning to beach blanket bingo. Yes, it does. There we go. <laughs> I don't want to even know how they mark the X's and the O's in that. Uh, <laughs> it's blotter. There's no chip to wipe away. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, sorry. Uh. Yeah, those are my thoughts. Oh. Uh, my, I'm sorry, but my thoughts. <laughs> no, that's fine. Gutter. Awesome, we, Mary Bell. That's awesome. The, the, the whole the, legal aspect of it just went out the window. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> no. That's, that, you know, I, that's an aspect of it that I did not even consider. They could just section section off, you know, a part of the beach and say, if you want to masturbate, go on this side, and you know. <laughs> well, you're still, then I, if they have a whole section if, just for that beach, if, then I, I'm going to be make sure. Actually, go to the beach and enjoy the water and enjoy the sun. You go on this side. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was going to say. I was going to. I was going to say. If you're going to go over to that side of the beach and you're going to do that, then you know, make sure you wear your slippers or you wear your thongs or, or you know, flip flops or whatever. Because there's some that that's not a jellyfish that's you're just, stepping that's in. That's just waste. That's it. <laughs> but you know what? Then I think to myself. I think it goes back to evolving. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's like I I agree with with her you know like we need to we really as human beings we need to participate and not change things around to suit your own personal needs I mean it's like is it gonna come for that day that we're gonna go to the beach to jerk off and not actually enjoy nature and the sun and the water Mm -hmm. well you know if you're doing that you're enjoying nature right to its fullest right <laughs> what comes more natural than that? <laughs> but, <laughs> well, maybe if this sunset natural, just couldn't get any more red. <laughs> Unless you're taking the blue pill, in which case, then you, er, that sunset's not going to be red anymore. It's going to be blue, and while well, you're doing that, but never mind. Well, maybe he did take a blue pill. I mean, what? He's 65 years old. <laughs> what was if he he's still doing it at 65, there? like what? <laughs> What was that all about? Like, what possessed him to take out his dick and say, you know what? <laughs> I think I'm just going to jerk off right here. I've, and I've heard of people. I don't care what anybody says or thinks. I have to have an orgasm right now. I've heard of people doing. It was on his bucket list. It's like, it was, maybe it was. <laughs> maybe it was. There, there, I've heard of people masturbating on the subway or on planes or, or whatever. You know, it doesn't matter where we are. Because people are just going to just going to grab it. Sometimes you just do it. I mean, men or women. So, 
who knows? But anyway, uh, now that we've uh, kind of uh, stroked this one out, let's move on to our... <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> wah, wah, wah. Let's move on to our uh, next topic for this evening. <laughs> We are going to, for the first time, we're going to stay in the same country we've been talking about just in the last in the last segment there. We're going to stay in Sweden. Here's something you would never think would be a problem. You've run out of garbage. You know, I've run out of batteries. I've run out of bread. I've run out of milk. But I've never run out of garbage. Garbage just seems to be one thing you almost seem to never run out of. Sweden, on the other hand, is because they're taking the garbage that's over there and they are using it for an alternative fuel. Now, they've gone so far as they're importing garbage from other countries around them. And But when they get done with it, after they've incinerated it all, they take the waste product and they ship it back to the original countries and they and to have them to bury this stuff. Now, what happens is with this, it powers more than 9.5 million citizens that basically running their homes, the electrical grid runs on waste fuels. They're shipping in 80,000 tons of refuse annually just to fuel the country uh, with the outside waste. Joe, your thoughts? Yeah, um, Sweden is just this peaceful, atheist, happy, jerk-off-on-the-beach, environmentally <laughs> friendly Garden of Eden that all other nations aspire to be now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean... I, I want to jerk off guy, of the beach and run my house on garbage. I, I mean, I bet the guy on the beach even recycled 90% 96% of his semen before incinerating the remaining 4%, just like they do with their garbage. I mean, I mean, that's that's it. I'm moving to Sweden. I want my knuckle children to grow up in a place that's green <laughs> and naked. <laughs> oh, that's too good, Joe. Any uh, other thoughts? It, <laughs> it, it is definitely interesting that they have to import garbage to run their uh, power plants. That is a problem that many nations wish they had. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. It, yeah. Yes, it is. Definitely. Uh, do you have any last thoughts on that? I concede to the young lady from Seattle. Okay. Connie, your thoughts? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, only 4% of all the waste generated in Sweden is landfilled. And what was really funny was... I was looking at this machine, <clears throat> these plants in Sweden. I'm going, where have I seen this before? This looks like Toy Story 3. Mm -hmm. Turns <laughs> out that, yeah, incineration plants are actually here in America, too. And it's exactly what they are showing in the movie Toy Story 3. Mm -hmm. which, you mean right to the big fire scene where all its yes, toys would be melted the down? One, the one that everybody falsely said, oh, guess what, Buzz and... Woody and everybody die in the incinerator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, actually there's one of those plants not too far from me, right here in uh, the uh, Pierce County area of Washington. It's like seven miles away from me. It's amazing because this, this way that they reduce down the, uh, the waste, it winds up being there's just like ashes. I don't know what they do with the ashes. I was not able to figure that out. Yeah, they're just taking um, ship. They just scoop that up and they ship it back to the countries and of landfill order. it. Yeah, and they landfill well, it. Down, know, yeah. it, it and no, here, you know, and everybody. That's that's uh, that's amazing. That's yes. amazing to me. And this is this is like why aren't we doing this? And unfortunately, though, you know, <laughs> if you put out the sign, hey, send me all your <laughs> all your landfill, you get. Who knows what? Mm -hmm. But yeah, they have to import it from Norway right now, but they would rather it came from Italy, Romania, Bulgaria, mm -hmm. and the Baltic countries because those places don't have really recycling or anything. Right. Yeah. And they're, you know, there's just trashy places anyway. No. <laughs> <laughs> just Aww. kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> to all the listeners in the Baltic states. Yes. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have one, and he he's just going to get the whole country in uproar over it now. But uh. <laughs> it's an ama it's amazing. My dad worked for Warehouser, and it was all about recycling and. Oh, really? That's kind of cool. To, yeah, and and taking pulp wood and making diapers and all these other things with uh, wood pulp, yeah. and how you clean out 
your factory. Anyway, I, 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 I was going to, I was going to, I was going to say that's, that's very interesting. My father, my father also re- worked for Warehouser too when I was very young too. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I didn't realize um, we had that connection. No. no. <laughs> wait a minute. My, wait, wait, we're, we're going to have to compare some notes now because my dad used to travel a lot. So we're going to have to start comparing some notes now. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Oh, wouldn't this be a wouldn't this be an interesting uh, conversation after the show? Yes, it would. <laughs> yes, it would. I'm not sure my mother would be very interested in it. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. Totally recording. off the rails there. Yes. 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 <laughs> I think like, it's I think it's exciting. I'm a recycler. I love recycling. Mm-hmm. It's why that, you know, even though a family be flexing between four and like eight people, mm-hmm. you know, depending on which I ki- my adult kids move back in, mm-hmm. I'm able to have just one garbage can. Yes. And so it's, I'm a big proponent of recycling because I think that global warming and all these other things, it's like, why aren't we uh, trying to reduce and reuse and recycle? Yeah, the town I, that I live in, they're working on building a uh, biomass plant in the area. So uh, I, I think the biomass plants, and I think if that I'm not mistaken, this is what this basically is, because we generate so much trash in this country alone, that the fact is that we could be using this to generate power. And I think that's yes. I think that's the right way to go. Why not? Yeah, exactly. And the in the what's it left, turns turb- it turns the turbines. Mm-hmm. It, you know, yeah, it generates electricity and. Yeah, you wind up with less in your landfills. Right, absolutely. There will be landfills, but there'll be a lot less. I mean, it's exactly. dust by, by comparison. So, Maribel, your thoughts, please. I really don't have any thoughts on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I don't know how a country runs out of garbage and... and they burned it all. We're just doing something wrong over here. Maybe the United States is just a mess as a whole. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we're going to start by cleaning up the garbage, we could start with the senators out in, and the GOP out in D.C. first off. But, I mean, if we're talking about cleaning up garbage as far as the people is concerned, that's yeah. a whole other topic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> people are not going to like me too much after that. No. <laughs> oh, Maribel, do you really feel that way? Oh, uh, yes, I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. You know, if you don't have any other comments on that, uh, we'll get on to our uh, next topic for this evening. And tonight we're continuing our logical fallacy series. Where tonight we're going to be talking about two logical fallacies. One is the appeal to emotion, and the other one is going to be the anecdotal fallacy. When you were younger, and your parents said, "Well, you got to finish your broccoli because there is somebody over in China that hasn't got a thing to eat. So if you don't eat this, then they're going to, you're just making another child starve." Well, that's basically appealing to the, the emotion because you're trying to put an emotional attachment to whatever it is you're doing or not doing in this case. And the other one there is the anecdotal fallacy. It's a storytelling from based on a personal experience. Let's say I have a grandfather, and he had birthday cake every day. He lived to be 90 years old. So me eating birthday cake is not going to hurt me, and I'm not going to get uh, diabetes or whatever because he never got diabetes from eating all that birthday cake all the time. So it, it, that's another one of those things there. So we're going to get the timer started. That just just preface this a little bit. And normally we'd have uh, our guests start out with our our question, but uh, for our discussion. But tonight we're going to let her off the hook, and we're going to start with Connie. And our, or there's our timer right here. I can say something at the end, really quick. Sure. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we'll start the timer now. And Connie, your thoughts? Well, um, the attempt. To the appeal to emotion is a red herring. You're trying to um, manipulate an emotional response mm-hmm. in place of a valid or compelling argument. Right. Um, you know, you're going to burn in hell would be the religious example. And um, it's also related to wishful thinking. <clears throat> Damn it. 
<laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened to me? I don't know. Uh, I was confused here. That's all right. Um, distinction between relevant and fallacious appeals to emotion is based on the distinction between arguments that aim to motivate us to action and those which intend to convince us to believe in something. Right. So, yeah, um, if you had to dumb this down to <laughs> what it is for, you know, religion, it's just... Um, well, in this case, it, it, sometimes it appeals to uh, fear. You said fear. Uh, sometimes well, hatred yeah, and then pride. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and it's a it's a uh, logically coherent argument against the ins the inspire emotion or to have the emotional aspect. Uh, right. But the fallacy occurs when the emotion is used instead of a logical argument. Uh, so and fear, envy, hatred, pity, pride, mm -hmm. etc. Right. You know, so you don't have anything other than like. You know, if you don't buy this card, people are going to hate you. They're going to think you're lame. You know, right? Like, yeah, if you don't, yeah, if you don't buy the latest, yeah, if you don't, if you don't buy the latest toy, all your friends are going to don't right. are not going to like you anymore. Right. <laughs> that, that's appealing to emotion because you're appealing to their the, their fear of you know of being outcast by their friends. Right, and and part being part of the group, which is actually quite intrinsic mm -hmm. to the human human experience you know you want to be a part of the tribe mm -hmm. because exclusion usually means death it means you know you're not going to reproduce you're not going to yeah or sometimes know, socially you death you know. yeah right yep then i i guess that's all i have to say about this right now uh, okay well what about let's move on to the anecdotal uh the one i the example of you know the eating the birthday cake and everything there uh that's basically getting people to believe uh, someone's testimony as opposed to understanding the complex data and variation across the continuum. Um, basically, oh, yes. it, it's like saying, you know, there's other uh, other reasons why you should believe this. I mean, it, it's because this happened to me, so this should happen to you, or uh, don't have to worry about me because this happened to my grandfather, brother, or my br a brother, a friend, or whatever. Right. Well, personal testimony. I mean, that's what every single, you know, Sunday night or Saturday night um, church service is based on. Mm -hmm. it's, you, it's testimonial night. You know, Jesus God came. God healed me. Jesus, yeah. Jesus, yeah. I, I read this book. I read this thing. And all of a sudden I had an illumination. And, you know, Jesus told me that this is what's real. I mean, I'm all about this one thing. I mean, that was the thing that I thought really solidified my testimony as a Christian when mm -hmm. I was a Christian right. um, was personal experience. Personal experience is also why I still have a very vivid memory of an experience with the Ouija board, which I made a video about oh. on my channel. And uh, it was, it was extremely violent and um, it would have been a, you know, a movie, but I have to accept now that it was my mind, my mind's way of it coping mm -hmm. with uh, an event that I just couldn't, I couldn't rec recognize or rec reconcile. Right. Um, so yeah, you know, your anecdotal is only as as valid as people want to believe your personal testimony. Right. Because because we cannot share that. It's it's subjective. Yes. It is so, it yeah. is subjective in that instance. And that's what I have to say about it. Okay. Joe, your thoughts. I'm going to talk about the uh, the anecdotal fallacy with an anecdote. Uh, <laughs> at my job. What <laughs> the hell job, you say? <laughs> we sometimes have to come up with approaches to challenging behaviors from our clients. And when we talk about it, uh, we say, well, the behavior is this, and they always do that. And then my boss, who is a therapist, interjects, now, now, we can't say they always do it unless mm -hmm. we can show they always do it. Right. So then we have to start tracking the behavior on a chart. And after a month or two of tracking, we look at the data and we realize, oh, the behavior only happens like two or three times a month. So it doesn't happen all the time. It's not always happening. Right. So th that's an example of how uh, recording data almost always trumps perception and personal experience. Right. Um, reading about the anecdotal 
Sal, so you kind of reminds me of something that Adam Savage from the Mythbusters once said. He said, uh, remember, kids, the only difference between screwing around in science is writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> that's, very, that's very true. That's very true. <laughs> yes. Great. And uh, as for the other fallacy, I mean, uh, you guys gave great examples. Mm -hmm. uh, the one example that came to my mind was the arguments before the Iraq War where uh, they used uh, an appeal to fear. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you know, it'll be too late when there's a mushroom cloud over Washington, D.C. And everybody I, – I actually knew people who were worried about that, who were like, oh, my God, we have to do something. And even though – the country that we were worried about had no nuclear weapons or even an air force, so to speak. So. Yeah, I was like, well, how are they going to get it here? Ship it to us, Federal Express? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Ding so, dong! Nuclear bomb yield, here for you. I yield to our guest. Maribel, you have the last 45 seconds. Oh, my goodness. 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. What can I? How can I shorten this down? First and foremost, I don't believe in Jesus Christ. I did once upon a time. I don't now. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, that's a result of not seeing things that people were talking about. I mean, even recently, um, a place that I was working at, there was a woman who was convinced and was trying to convince me that Jesus spoke to her. He whispered in her mm. ear he whispered things oh, to yeah. her oh and um a buddy of mine rich wood said well you know i think jesus spoke to the son of sam as well so that should tell you where people's heads are at when it comes to certain things i yeah. mean i can respect what people want to believe in right what i don't respect is when they try to enforce that belief on me and say, well, mm -hmm. you have to believe in this because I believe in it. Right. That's I basically... grew up with that experience. And guess what? <laughs> it didn't do anything for me. Right. What I believe yeah. in for me works. And it's my own personal thing. And I don't have to share it with anybody because it's mine. Right. Yeah. No, that's a perfect example of anecdotal logical fallacy right there. Because Jesus spoke to me. I'm surprised you didn't have Jesus speak to you, you know, and shit like that. So, But anyway. You can't hear Jesus because you're not letting him into your heart. Right. Shut the heck up. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. All right. Well, let's get moving on to our uh, next topic for this evening. Whoa. Our funny tweet tonight comes from Steve Streza. That's S-T-E-V-E. S-T-R-E-Z-A. I'll say that again just in case I screwed it up. That's S-T-E-V-E-S-T-R-E-Z-A. -E -E he says, Mom, Dad, we need to have the talk. Sits down in a chair, takes a deep sigh. iOS 7 is going to make your phone look different. <laughs> <laughs> so many people are upset. It's like, um, hello, they've been announcing this for months. They've shown screenshots and videos yep. of what it's going to look like. And people are like, oh my God, it looks different. Oh, yeah, you know, it's because they basically <laughs> blanded the, the, they took the operating system and, and turned it into bland city. I mean, <laughs> we yeah. fear change. Yes, we do. We get to they're like, oh, this new shiny thing, you know? I think if we had started out with. Uh, the iPhone looking with this bland look. Steve I don't J think it looks bland. I think it looks simple and futuristic. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is it's it's too maybe it's just too simple. People can't. It, some things are too too simple. They don't understand it. So <laughs> I don't know. Anybody yeah. has any comments on this before we move on? I think that people complain too much. I mean, you know what? Yeah. No, I they don't. <laughs> I, I downloaded it this morning, and it didn't take me that long to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Uh, what really pissed me off was that there's this uh, hater who is totally for Android. And again, you know what? To each his own, everybody has their own preference, and I completely understand that. Right. What I can stand is when they just keep barking like the whole world is supposed to turn droid because mm -hmm. you like this and you love this about your phone and you love that about your phone. It's like, who gives a fuck what you think? Exactly. I mean, you know, like, he made this comment earlier today that the iPhone is, like, for senior citizens. And I found it insulting. I said, you know, it's better than being, I, if, that, if I'm considered a senior citizen, then it's better than being ignorant. And I left it at that because it's just like, <laughs> oh, yes. you know, we had a We had a little discussion after the last week's show, if you didn't, if the people who didn't get a chance to see that because they didn't come to the live show. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we had a a, a host to host uh, discussion. He was saying that if you have an iPhone, you're just be you're just like the believers. It's like that's a, that was I thought that was kind of insulting because it's like it's not I'm a, not a believer. I, so I it's... just think that it's so the argument is so stupid. I, it's it's kind of like. It's it's the same thing as like people. You have to believe in Jesus. You have to. You're gonna be saved if you believe in him, and then you'll go to heaven. But you have like the same people, the stupid assholes that knock on your fucking door, talking about you know, oh come and and only like two hundred thousand people are allowed in heaven. So if two hundred thousand people are allowed in heaven, why are you knocking on my door? Doesn't that take away the chances of you going into heaven as well? I, this, this would, I mean, it's like it doesn't make any sense, and and nobody thinks this way it's it's insanity i yes. mean the stupid commercials a lot of the times of uh, the things that i want to watch on tv i record when i see those stupid uh galaxy commercials and then and, and that stupid song it's like you know what this is so stupid right yeah <laughs> so i i didn't expect this the, the funny tweet to generate this much uh <laughs> conversation <laughs> You obviously didn't learn from last week. No, apparently not. <laughs> apparently not. I, I totally screwed that one up. But anyway, <laughs> that's. A... I, I just I think it's like a sore spot for me because no, no worries. You know, I'll tell you what. I, what... I've had Blackberries. I've had Androids. I've had flip phones, and I've had the same iPhone now. I I, I think it's it's two years or something like mm-hmm. that. And I'm happy with my phone. Yeah. I don't have any complaints about it. It does everything that I want it to do. I can even watch Dexter on it. There you you know, that's that. I don't right. need anything else. I, I don't even think that I'm going to invest in the 5S right now. Oh, there you go. I'll, I'll just wait. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, don't, don't let it all out right now. <laughs> we, we, we got your interview coming up here. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I forgot about that. That's all right. <laughs> All right, let's get on to our uh, next topic for this evening. Hey, you guys! Our shout-out tonight is from Joe, and Joe's shout-out is for Rosa Resurrected. That's R-O-S-A-R-E-S-U-R-R-E-C-T-E-D. Joe, can you tell us a little bit about Rosa Resurrected? Yeah, this is a very special shout-out because Rosa Resurrected is actually Rosa Ruby Condior. They had their account was up around 7,500 followers. They were pretty well known in the atheist hashtags. Mm-hmm. And uh, and yeah, awesome blog, awesome arguments, awesome tweets. And the uh, the theist gang up and they reported her for spam and got her, him, their account suspended. Mm-hmm. And it's been suspended twice in the last two months. And now the latest suspension has been going on, I think it's over a month now that the, the account has been suspended. So right. Rosa made a new account called Rosa Resurrected and is slowly building up the street cred again. So yes. uh, everybody who knows who Rosa Rubicon Dior was and uh, liked those tweets and, and that blog, please follow Rosa Resurrected and uh, yep. help get help get the street cred back up because it's totally worth it. Great Twitter, yep. great follow. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And it's bullshit what happened. So right, exactly, and I I agree on that. Normally we get like give shout outs for channels and that are up and coming that need to be shouted out, but in this instance we made an exception for this case because it is a, it's a bullshit situation that's going on that a lot of religious people are going after uh, atheists on Twitter and they're the ones that are persecuted. Because they're fucking crazy. Yes, they are fucking crazy. <laughs> but anyway, well, speaking of fucking crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, just a, it's such a sensitive topic for I, me. I understand. I understand. Well, speaking of that, let's get into our next topic for this evening. And tonight's special guest is Maribel Blue. And before we get started here, Maribel, just a quick question. Why Maribel Blue? Is Blue the last, not obviously, probably not your last name, but I mean, is is that mean a special color, color your eyes, favorite color? What is the blue part of Maribel Blue? I, I do not have blue eyes. Oh, okay. Maribel Blue, for a lot of people who have been following my magazine for quite some time, because I own an adult-themed 
magazine and it's also a lifestyle magazine so we welcome everybody who has alternative thinking mm -hmm. because that's what it's basically about alternative living and alternative thinking yeah we got your so, address right here at the bottom of the screen there at kinkymagazine.com that's right so yes going back to that in short um after i broke up with my ex-boyfriend i was really reinventing myself mm -hmm. um and there was a book that i had uh read and the one of the characters in the book her name was maribel blue oh and a lot of people don't know this because i think they believe that that's my real name but it's not but uh no anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just like my real name's Packard too. <laughs> so, um I I just liked where this woman how how she evolved in the book. The way she was described, she was very strong, she was very independent. Mm -hmm. She had a mind of her own and at that time in my life in 2000, 2001, I was the complete opposite of what this character was and I wanted to get there I wanted to find that place in my life so um, I adopted the name and I started a blog and from the blog it turned into a magazine and mm. from a magazine it just evolved from from there and as each day went on as each month went on and as each year went on I realized that I had become one with with that character in the book, but not a character as myself. Right. So I feel like I'm Maribel Blue now, oh. and I am. That that's that's it. Very interesting. Interesting. Look Excellent. At it. Yes. My next question here: You said uh, in the one of the previous uh, segments there that you're not religious and you don't believe in Jesus Christ or anything like that. Were you ever religious, or, and how and how did you come to your non-belief? I was very very religious okay. um, at one time. Believe it or not, I grew up uh, with the Catholic faith. My whole entire family is Catholic. Um, some have converted to some form of Christianity um, and you know I would never know listening to them talking to them there are other people that are not family related that you would know because they have to you know throw Jesus in there but um, it it definitely happened uh, um, when I was a teenager I remember my sister and I getting confirmed and they put the oil on your head oh, and yeah. when we left my sister was like, did you feel that? You know, did you feel that feeling when they put the oil on your head? And I was like, no. And I looked at her like, gee, what does she feel that I didn't feel? I thought I did something wrong. And, it was slime. Um, <laughs> it, it, it kind of like started the trend of what the fuck is going on here? Like, why... Why is it that people are feeling certain things? And, you know, of course, getting exposed to other types of religion. Um, I had a lot of friends who believed in the Baptist faith. And, you know, they were talking about falling on the floor and mm -hmm. feeling the spirit. And that was something that I couldn't relate to either. Um, I was with Connie. What Connie was talking about before with the Ouija board, I played with that. I will never play with it again. I really believe that the experiences that... I had um, playing with that was very real, and it really scared the shit out of me. I so, understand that. My my brothers and sisters you tell me about the stuff that they used to do with the Ouija board and stuff. I have I also have a niece that said she took one and she broke it open. She found magnets inside. So I, I don't know if that's true or not, but eh, maybe. I I mean I don't I don't know, and I'm I'm not gonna play with one <laughs> to find out. <laughs> Whether it's true or not, mm -hmm. um, I can only share what, you know, based on my personal experiences that I had with the board. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really going to get into it right now because oh, it's sure. just spooky. But anyway. Um, We're all about debunking spooky on this show. <laughs> right, right. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> And you know what? At the time, I was using drugs, so anything goes at that point. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're using drugs, you might as well just like, there there you go. It just, I just blame drugs and just right. chalk exactly. it up to that. Exactly. But um, 
Yeah, that kind of started the trend of questioning Christianity and and what to believe and what not to believe. I mean, I even had I had befriended a priest in the parish and I was talking to him and it almost was like I wasn't getting any real answer from anybody. I don't mm-hmm. think that they had answers to their own um level of insanity, I guess, for lack of a of a better word. No, that's and a good reason. It just kind of trickled from there. I mean, I, I had stopped going to church, and then, um, you know, I went back at some point in my life, and it just really came to a point that I was like, look, you know, I'm not believing in this. Um, I'm never going to believe in it. And there, in the beginning, there was that fear that, you know, like we were talking about before, that if I don't believe in it, you know, I'm I'm going to go to hell or this and that. And once I started opening up to other concepts and other philosophies and other understandings um, that people had on their own personal spiritual journey or, you know, whatever it is, I mean, I've, I have friends who you know, who are Satanists and, you know, some of them are more like of a philosophical Mm -hmm. nature and not so much, you know, we're going to dress up in black robes and, you know, worship the devil. It's like the total opposite of what, what's depicted on TV and what society would like for you to believe. Right. And this is why, you know, the magazine is it it had evolved in the sense that we're not just talking about kinky lifestyle and or kinky sex but we're talking about alternative thinking alternative beliefs and i think once i had changed the magazine to have that that thought process in mind that i started to attract more and more people like yourself you know, who who is an atheist, who has this alternative thinking, who, mm-hmm. you know, who has a sarcastic sense of humor like I do. And um, it became very important to me to talk to more and more people who have this this type of, of lifestyle, mm-hmm. this, these types of beliefs. And I became comfortable with the fact that it was okay that I no longer believed in the the Catholic mind or the Catholic thoughts or the Catholic upbringing. My mother has an issue with it, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I think she just understands that what what I personally believe in is what makes me happy. Mm-hmm. You know, there are times that I switch, oh, there's nothing really out there. And then there are times that, you know, I kind of sit down and say, you know what, universe, like, whatever, you know, Mm. help me with this or help me with that. But I, I think for me, it's just something that's ongoing. It just doesn't just stay. It's like, you know, it's it's an everyday thing for me. Yeah. But as far as the whole Catholic faith is concerned, I I will never go back. I went to a church yesterday and I took pictures for my mom, but you know, I And you didn't burst into flames? No, I didn't burst into flames. <laughs> it was funny because I put it on Facebook and I said I'm going to get ready to walk into a church right now. And of course, everybody was like making jokes and things of that nature, but you know, looking around this particular church, because here in New York, they have the San Gennaro feast going on, and I think it's going to end this weekend, I'm not sure, Mm -hmm. but it really solidified that everything that I thought was real back then is still not real Mm -hmm. for me today. Yeah, and I'm comfortable with that. And if other people are not comfortable with it, well, then you know, fine, so be it. I could really care less. Right. No, I can understand that completely. It's just that's not unheard of. The stuff that you've described there, the, dealing with the family and the, and the friends, if they don't want to deal with it, then it's just hey, it's tough cheese for them. So, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. anyway, my next question here is: I, some of your videos that you've done, uh, is that done like done in like a real studio? because you got a lot lot of good camera switching and things like that do you do the editing for the video or do you have somebody else doing the editing for you or 
Well, you know, I have I have a show. It's called KEM Top Talk. It's mm -hmm. short for Kinky Magazine. It's just way too long to give a talk show a very long name. So we just called it KEM Top Talk. Top Talk basically came from top topics, mm -hmm. you know, and alternative topics. P things that people are not talking about on regular TV, we're going to talk about it here on KEM Top Talk. Right. Um, I was in a studio. I was shooting out in a in a place in Long Island, and um, unfortunately, it it didn't work out um, because the guy wanted something more family oriented, and um, and now I hear that he doesn't have a studio. So you see, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. When you try to change something that was actually working. So at this point now. The show is on hiatus. Every now and then I'll do something here out of what I call the Kinky Magazine headquarters, which is my bedroom. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Hey, you, you know, got to do somewhere. I, I do this in my living room. So. <laughs> yeah, and I, I talk about, you know, The Bachelor and The Bachelorette and relationships and dating. I just try to keep it very simple and to the point but i'm hoping that very very soon we can start doing the show again well good we'll look forward to it i have another quick question here do you ever watch any other youtube channels or what's the other channels that you like out there on youtube besides you know peckard pokes at uh <laughs> 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 to be honest with you um I i'm i'm not a big YouTube fan. I mean, I put my videos up there, mm -hmm. but um, I really don't spend a lot of my day watching different sorts of videos. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Um, I think because I'm just too busy working on the magazine and talking right. to people and and setting up interviews and you know people that want to work with me. It kind of like falls through the cracks unless somebody brings up you know, some parody video, then, you know, uh, I'll check it out. But I'm, I feel like a lot of the times with YouTube, I'm like the last one to know, like everybody was talking about this, um, that thing that everybody was doing. Now I forget what it was, that uh, Harlem Shake thing when everybody was like, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, like I didn't know what was going on until somebody had mentioned, I'm like, what is that? So, <laughs> yeah. 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 See, the big thing for me right now is the the one with the the new pope. He's sitting there going, he he's out there picking his nose and then he then he eats it. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know if I want to see that unless I want to. It, it, no, it's it's about it's about ten seconds. It's not even ten seconds long. He goes, uh, he, he picks his nose. He goes, oh, he waves, and then he puts it in his mouth and like he gets this look Ew, on his face. And that's then they re disgusting. Yeah, it is a little disgusting. So the the unfallible pope. Is you know likes boogers, but it, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, besides being on YouTube and your magazine, what do you do outside of that? Do you, do you have a, another job for right now, or is just you, is your sole income? Just I from do. Your... I do have another job. I have a regular working day job. Mm -hmm. You don't and, have to give the name um, of it. No, no, no. I I would never disclose. Oh, uh, that's fine. That's perfectly fine the name but yes i do and and i remain undercover and nobody knows who i am and that's a good thing mm -hmm. it's it's nice to be anonymous yeah at least for now <laughs> yeah my goal at the end of the day is not to be so anonymous and maybe walk down the street and people say hey that's maribel blue you know oh. um i'm sure that day will come but needless to say uh I, I really it's it's almost sad. I don't I don't I don't know if this is good or bad. I mean I do go out, it's not like I don't go out, but mm -hmm. a lot of the times when I go out it's all business related. You mm -hmm. know, I'm out meeting publicists, I'm meeting adult stars, I'm meeting porn stars, I'm meeting BDS stars, <laughs> a BDSM. I mean it's like it's this is what my whole life has really evolved to. Um when I get people asking me, yeah, let's hang out. If I don't like them, I tell them, sure, you know, we'll hang out really soon. And that's never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> now I know if you say, yeah, we'll come I'll come back again real soon. <laughs> uh-huh. Sure. She hated us. Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not. I, I, not uh, personal curiosity. Now you said you do stuff with BDSM. Do you like have a lot of uh, BDSM uh, apparel, toy type things? You, you, I mean, do you get like yes. sponsored stuff like that? Is it like do you, the, you have like people that just say if you show this on your show that you basically get discount or free or or how does that work for? Or do you have to buy just pour Bruno all the way out on your own on your own dime as it were? Packard is in the market, by the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a good whip. <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> that was Maybe a good harness and a little mask. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to get like a sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do that to your show. If you do that, I'll believe me. I'll be vlogging it every Friday night. <laughs> dying I'll get a whip sound. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do have a, a a small collection that's that's building up. I do have uh, two whips. I have several paddles. Um, really? I think I have handcuffs somewhere. <laughs> Although I like. I got a pair of handcuffs. <laughs> I do. I have a. I have a. I have a pair of real police issue pa- handcuffs. These are oh. not. The, they're not the fluffy cuffs. These are real <laughs> handcuffs. <laughs> I don't you know have how you key, got right? out of those without cutting them off. <laughs> <laughs> I never tell. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. <laughs> hey, I had to, Joe. You left me attached to the bed. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> it was Gerald's game in real no, life. No, <laughs> I, I have to say that it's funny that you bring that up because I, I wrote a blog um, not too long ago on my on my WordPress every now and then when something stupid happens I feel the need to write about it um, and I wrote recently about the confusion of uh, what people get when um, when they're seeking out you know a, a BDSM partner and I was mm-hmm. talking about a guy who I met I think it was last summer and you know he he was basically feeding me the guys that he was looking for a dominatrix and you know and and financial stuff and mm-hmm. whatever and then we go out and meet and he was uh, not very good looking mm. and um, he goes on to talk about how he wants a woman that his fetish, which to me is not a real fetish, mm-hmm. but his fetish was that he wants a woman to sit on him so he can eat her out. And I'm like looking at him like, okay, that's not like a real fetish. You're like uh-huh. sitting here basically saying that you want to have sex with me for free. And, you know, first of all, I'm not a prostitute. <laughs> right. So, you know, I'm not attracted to you. So... Neither one is is going to happen, and right. I think that's where people get really, really confused with what what bondage is really about, what pro dominas are, and mm. who they are, and and how they um, service their client. Joe Unseen says, "My sister bang Ron Jeremy. Yes. I actually <laughs> made out with Ron Jeremy last year. Did you really? <laughs> wow." And he's a really good kisser, I need to say that. (laughs) I couldn't believe it. Oh, my goodness. Like, the first porn movie I saw was a teenager, and I'm, like, making out with this man. But anyway, um, (laughs) getting back to the the topic at hand, um, I I think in, in, you know... And, and again, it's like it's going back to Connie and about evolving and being productive members of society mm-hmm. that, you know, we have these different lifestyles and we have these different beliefs. And it's really about respecting one another's boundaries. Mm-hmm. And I think people really get lost in that. They sit there and they hide behind their computers. I mean, I wrote about not too a couple of days ago, I wrote about... Uh, about Duck Dynasty. I made a comment on Facebook. Yeah. Duck Dynasty. Don't get it. Don't care. Right. <laughs> and yeah. like these two women 
blatantly attacked me on Facebook. Now my Facebook profile is public, so there there are some things that I put for public consumption. And you know when I do that, it it automatically goes to Twitter. Mm -hmm. Now nobody on Twitter really said that. If anything, they just retweeted what I said, right? And you know and favored it on Facebook. I had these two women. One is calling me a whore, and I'm because you, you know, don't like Duck Dynasty. Hey, you don't like Duck Dynasty. You know, you're a whore. A twister, porn, what whatever. And the other one was talking about. I, she was talking in large caps too. So when you know, in 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 oh. our world of computer, when you speak in large caps, you're yelling. Yeah. And she's yeah. going off. You don't know anything about that show, and blah. And I'm like, okay, like let's understand what I just said. You know, like, that's that's very that's very similar to your, that experience right there. It's very similar to like a lot of people we have as atheists to have to deal with Christians. Like, you don't understand Jesus. You don't understand religion. It's like, what the hell is there to understand? Really, it's the same. It's the same thing. It's, it's insanity and yes. you can't you can't argue with insanity and you can't explain stupid it's it's a total waste of time yep. i think you know this is the reason why i put it's 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 on my wordpress post and it's called valuable meanings and i i put it up just the other day and once i put it up i got like a lot of more people following me and oh, cool. basically it was Breaking down the meaning of the word hate, of the word indifferent, and the word care. Because I, I think that these two women got lost in the sauce of probably having fantasies about long-bearded men eating out their hairy pussies. And <laughs> they thought that I was... <laughs> talking about hating these guys I don't hate these guys I don't care about the people that watch them. when you put care into something you're putting your energy into something when you, mm -hmm. when you put hate into something you're putting that energy into it B being that I don't watch the show I don't care for the show I have no interest of the show it means that I'm indifferent and I used an example on my blog I said you know people aren't different towards animals it doesn't mean that they hate an animal or they wish bad or they have ill feelings towards the animals it just mm -hmm. means that it's not part of their scope and right. people right. get so upset over that shit it's like why the fuck are you getting upset for why do you care why it's like it's that person's belief it's that person's choice and you're taking the time out of your life to try and fix that person right. and people just don't know how to mind their fucking business it right. came to a point that I had to block these women because I was not gonna sit there and be attacked over something that I feel indifferent towards I don't get it and I don't care There's no reason yet, to. it's over and done with yeah it's just a, it's just a fucking TV show people <laughs> if you don't like it you don't like it there's people out there, you know, I, I don't understand why they don't like it, but it, it doesn't bo affect me. It, there's some people out there who don't like Doctor Who or they don't like Star Wars. They don't like Star Trek, whatever it is, you know, if they don't they like or they don't like. What's that? They're dead to me, Pat. They're <laughs> <laughs> They are dead to me too, Connie. But hey, let them go on their way. As far as I'm concerned. Sorry. No, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Maribel, I have one more quick question before you, and then I'm going to turn over my questions to the people over in the chat room and the and our co-hosts here. I saw one of your videos, and now you can feel free if you don't want to answer this. It's, that's perfectly up to you. That one of the videos you have, you were actually got. I, I've never actually had a chance to talk to anybody who's done this. The video you were in, you were riding a Sibian machine one this is a two-part question one did you buy one and two how much were they selling those things for because i've i've seen them sell i've seen these things supposedly selling for like two three grand it, what was the experience like for you in that instance well first i have to say uh, i have to give credit to dave lambert who created the Sibian. he's a very good friend of mine i know him personally i've never met him but i know him personally i have his phone number he has mine and he calls me by my real name wow <laughs> um, I actually rode the Sibian at Exotica um, earlier this year in Atlantic City 
it was at the table of my crew, Cocklet Pops. Mm -hmm. uh, they sell chocolate pops. And um, the guy handling the control was very, very cute. And it was very easy to look at him and just try and concentrate on having an orgasm until this guy appeared that I used to appear on his show and he kind of like ruined the moment <laughs> for me. Um, but I can tell you that being on there um, really felt different from the vibrator in my drawer. <laughs> ah. It 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 has I don't I don't know what magic Dave Lambert put into this machine, mm -hmm. but it's it definitely feels different, and I think that if a woman wanted to have a different kind of experience as far as orgasms was concerned, right. um, a Sibian is a great investment to to make. I, 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 I to answer your other question, okay. I have not gotten one okay. yet, okay. but I. <laughs> I intend to when I am no longer sharing my apartment with ah. my family members. <laughs> ah. and, and, and when that happens, it's like, I'm just going to lock the door and I, I won't see you for about a month. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'll do is I'll really test it out because he says uh -huh. it gets rid of migraine. So I'll wait till I have a migraine one particular day and get on there and see if it goes away. <laughs> I've heard that helps too. <laughs> no, I, I personally, I mean, I, I don't have any medical training on this, but I think that the, it's just the, the position is probably why the experience is so much more intense being in a more vertical position because you have to hold yourself upright and you have to, you have to take more control of all your muscles. And, right. and then instead of, you know, where you're using a toy where you, you'd be laying down or leaning back against something it's on a machine like that, you're like I just said, you have to hold yourself up. So right. you're, you're more and more, everything's going to be a little bit more intense. I mean, well, th I that's think just my what, thoughts what anyway. would be easier is if uh, I have a monkey bars belt on and have the guy behind me holding me with the belt okay. on the Sibian. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up! <laughs> yes. <laughs> just thinking about it now, I just, I, I took a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> I love talking about sex. I think it's it's a it's a good conversation. Yes, it is. It, those are the, so, uh, how long ago was that that you had that experience? Did you use that? Did you get when you tried that? How long ago was that? Um, it was actually earlier this year at Exotica. Uh, oh, okay. I think it was uh, in April. So this and, is so if it was back in April and here it is almost October and you're, if you're you're just even thinking about it you're like oh okay I, that that has to take some kind of impact on you it's like but, ooh it, yeah it was funny that you were thinking you was you were saying that because I was thinking a couple of days ago that Exotica's coming up in October mm -hmm. and I'm saying who's going to be there with a Sibian so that I could get on there <laughs> 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 oh, I said this time I'm going to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna turn my questions over to the uh panel here uh joe do you have questions for marbell blue uh yeah uh not really but i would like to discuss uh some of your videos with you i was watching a lot of your videos today uh i have a uh, wireless headphones so i put on your channel i was playing your playlist and i was like walking around the house listening to your voice and uh you, you talk a lot about sex and relationships and tv shows and i noticed that when you were talking about relationships sometimes you would talk about religion and my ears would perk up at that point i'd listen a little bit closer and and you would acknowledge that sometimes religion can be an issue in a relationship and i thought that was cool that you were actually talking about that kind of stuff and then in one of your videos you were talking about a tree that was in the shape of a weeping saint do you recall that no it was like I, in the shape uh, oh, of the yes yes i i think I, I don't know. I remember I was making fun of something in right. the news. Yeah. It, it was um, in the shape of – I couldn't make out what you said. It was like the the Mother Mary or something like that. But people were flocking to this tree from far right. and wide to they see this tree. They were taking pictures like lunatics saying that Mary was in this tree. And I'm saying to myself, didn't anybody ever think that maybe somebody carved that shit it, in there? And then they exactly. think you know, some kind exactly. of miracle happened? 
Right. Yeah. When you were telling that story, mm-hmm. I thought it was really cool that you critically asked the question, like, well, maybe somebody carved it, or maybe the tree had a disease and it happened to rot into that shape. Mm-hmm. And I was like, aha, like, this this woman is awesome because she, she's asking questions like that. Yes. You but, have um, to ask questions like that. If you don't, you're just going to take in what somebody else is saying, and mm-hmm. you're not allowing yourself to analyze what it is that they're saying. Then you're just taking it at face value and saying, okay, mm-hmm. and you're not making a discussion for yourself. You know, as human beings, we have to challenge ourselves all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe not everybody believes in that. I personally believe in it. You know, running running a business and running a magazine, it's like two entirely different things because oh, I'm yeah. running the business aspect of it, and that's a challenge by itself. And then I'm running the magazine aspect of it where I'm talking to different people and, and I'm, I'm gaining so much information. And yeah, and that show, I had to bring that up because people were losing their minds over this tree and thinking, you know, some miracle happened. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you've got to be kidding me. Like, you no, know, nobody thought that maybe the night before somebody came and like, you know, made mm-hmm. that on purpose. It's you can't, I, I, I mean, you know, you can't make like a grilled cheese and then, you know, the pan is oh. like shaped in a certain way and then say, Oh my God, Jesus is in the grilled cheese. I, uh, I, <laughs> oh yeah. That, and they sold it on eBay with a bite missing from it. Like, Oh, I was like, <laughs> Oh my God! It's the Mother Mary. Oh, it's a miracle! It's it a grilled cheese. Day, our holy grilled cheese. The holy grilled cheese. Uh, like holy fucking shit! How fucking how how fucking uh, yeah. moron when I, are you? When when I listened to you to you talk about that tree, though, it got me thinking. I was like, okay, let's say let's say a disease did cause the tree to rot away into that shape, and it was just oozing sap, and people happened to look at it. Let's say the same thing happened in India. Would they see the the Mary, Virgin Mary? in a tree or would they see their local god in that same tree oh that's an issue you know, so your video actually got me thinking about that because uh you know i thought it was cool um another thing is i noticed a lot of your videos you talk about the bachelor and the bachelorette mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of those shows but my wife is and sometimes i watch them with her and uh, i'll tell you a real quick story here a while back on twitter uh one of the bachelors from from season three of the bachelorette was on twitter and he was bad mouthing atheists. He was going around talking about y'all need Jesus and stuff like that. And he was getting a lot of attention by saying things like that. And a lot of people that we all follow were like talking to him. And I was even talking to him a bit. And and he was giving me some shit. And it was kind of funny. It went on for a couple of days. And then finally he just shut up. He was like, "All right, I'm done with all you atheists on Twitter." And he started talking <laughs> about his burgeoning acting career. And uh, I showed a picture of his profile picture to uh, my wife, and she immediately recognized him. She was like, oh, yeah, that guy, he's an asshole. <laughs> what, what was The Bachelor in season three? I can't remember. It wasn't... It, it was one of the guys... It was The Bachelorette, and it was one of the guys that was in the house. So it was like there was many guys. It was The Bachelorette season three. Yeah. And I think his name was Steve, but I don't remember. I mean, it was, it was a while ago. It was like maybe a year ago he was doing this. But he was all over Twitter trying to, you know, engaging people in conversations about God and religion and stuff. And, and we, were, we, were having, we were having a lot of fun talking to him because he didn't really know what he was doing. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think, it, it, again, it goes back to my comments that, uh, you know, I've made probably hundreds of times on the show and in private and, and talking with, you know, with friends and writing about blogs that, um, you know, I, I think that when you start involving religion to define a relationship, basically mm. you're fucked. I mean, there's no other way of putting it. You, you, mm. you start, you start implementing these rules and conditions in a relationship that I think you know, way back when, nobody was really thinking about it. And when I say way back when, probably like in the Roman times or, you know, whatever, I, I wasn't there, so I don't know. But, you know, I, I I think that a lot of society thinking today is so screwed up that mm-hmm. um, you just start putting these limitations on relationships and I just think that it's really unfair and I mean I I started seeing a man a couple of years ago the relationship didn't last very long and you know he and I are good friends as well it seems that everybody that I break up with I ended up becoming a good friend with them but um that tends he, to happen he <laughs> 
Well, he is. Uh, he practices the Islamic faith. He's a Muslim, and he is completely wrapped in that. and And I completely respect him as a result of that. He doesn't sit there and try and convert anything to me. Um, and this is the reason why I can talk to him because he's just one of those people that's just intellectually smart. And if you're intellectually smart, then I want to talk with you and get to know you. I'm. I'm. I'm not going to care about your religious beliefs or aspects because in this case you know he doesn't come off that way you know well if you live this way then whatever but you know the demise of the relationship was because of of the religion I was not gonna convert into something that I have no belief in I'm not gonna wrap my head in a scarf you know because of you know some punishment or you know somebody mentioned to me the other day that you know, it goes to show you what those men are mm -hmm. that, you know, have to have their wives all covered up so that other men don't look at them. Yeah, so, you know, that, I think in the, in, when it comes to Islamic religion, that basically t says to the men, it's like, hey, that you have no self-control. And I don't right. think I don't think they even see that. It's like they they blame the women, but it's like, well, right. if it's the women's fault, then it's your fault that you you think you jerk have to have you're going to have to go and rape these women. So then the the problem is you, not them. I, I don't want to get this on for too long because I'm going to have a hell of a job editing. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Does Connie have any questions? Yeah, I was going to get you, Connie. Do you have any questions for Maribel Blue? My questions are really difficult, and I'm going to say it out front. It's because. You know, how do we normalize sex if we are uncomfortable with sexuality? There have been a lot of things because I am an atheist and obviously, you know, because of I was a Christian, um, there's a very and prudish attitudes I had towards sex growing up and whatnot. And so even though I was watching your videos and I found myself getting really uncomfortable, I haven't been a Christian for over seven years now. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't watch these videos, you know, <laughs> and it's not, it's not like I, I mean, I have, I've had, I've had eight kids. I'm not, it's not like I'm not a familiar with sex. I was trying to find a, an approach to ask you a question. And I just have to say that, you know, I just can only approach it from everything I've been saying up till now. I think that we really have to be honest with ourselves about sexuality, about who we are and what we want and what we want in relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where the problem is in most relationships. And I don't know if you find that, but it's like, hey, I am only in this relationship right now. I saw this on your, one of your videos. It's like, I, I, don't think, I don't think that anybody under the age of 25 should probably get married simply because they're still exploring. I think right. that everybody should be on birth control. And I think that, you know, what I'm saying, I, I just think that there's so many reasons that sexuality is something that, how do we feel about it? I, I, well, anyway, that's not really a question. I'm sorry, Maribel, but... It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm enjoying everything that you're saying. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I just... For me, I just... I, I wish that I... I wish I fully understood it because I've got... You know, still so I got some teen kids and I'm trying to be a responsible parent with them and understand things like, you know... <laughs> their sexuality and what to tell them growing up mm -hmm. well I guess a question I would have is you have a blog then you have a blog because I didn't find that when I was looking um I do have a blog and sometimes I forget that I have it until something comes up like Duck Dynasty the other day where I was like wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> Who that? I need to blog about this anyway um I do have a blog a blog on WordPress it's um yeah it's maribelblue.wordpress.com Dot com and it's called viewing the world in a box okay. um, I don't know if you found it but anyway um, I will well, I, well, what was your well, what was your question um, like I'm I, sorry it wasn't really a question um, well, well you were talking about sexuality and the uncomfortable of, of yes All right. how, how have you how, how did you become comfortable with your sexuality? I became comfortable with it when, quite honestly, when I broke up with my ex-boyfriend. I think when I was with him, I was so, oh, how, how do I phrase this? I, 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 I was not happy with my body. 
Um, I never felt comfortable in my skin. That's not uncommon. A lot of women have that same experience. Yeah, but you know what it is, is that you, you have to, you don't have to, but for me, I, I find ways every day. There really is no cure in making yourself feel better. I think this is Mm -hmm. where people get, uh, completely lost. You don't get cured by, by feeling better. Do you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Oh, yeah. You I think just so. kind of find a way to deal with with that moment, with that with that feeling. You know, whatever whatever that feeling may be, you just you deal with it for that day. And I think that every time that I had a certain feeling about myself or about sex or whatever, I just deal with with that specific feeling and not just try and take on the whole thing and analyze what happened to me as a child and what happened to me in the middle and what happened to me growing up because it becomes too much after a while and then you get disgusted with yourself at the end of the day um you know I, i honestly i am not really um a sexually active person I love talking about sex. I love talking about relationships. I mean, you know, like I, I talk about The Bachelor. There's a reason why I talk about The Bachelor and The Bachelorette because you're you're watching relationships, quote unquote, flourish on TV, and it's sensationalized to make people think that this is how you find love, and they don't talk about all the relationships that have failed as a result of that show. I mean, I'm waiting for the announcement ah. of the last episode, the last season with Desiree and, and this guy, Chris. I'm waiting for the announcement that they broke up because I know that it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you had this guy that was predicting that she was going to be with somebody else. And while we were all convinced that was going to happen, it ended up being something completely different. And now I'm I'm convinced that this guy is in on making people believe that this is what's going to happen because it's just sensationalizing everything else. Mm, as, yeah. as for me, I look at it like this. If I don't want to deal with something, or, or rather, if I don't want to deal with someone on a sexual level, I don't deal with it. Right. That is my choice. I mean, there's mm-hmm. a guy who... who I was with last year and you know he wants to see me again and I would like to see him and you know I had that wonderful feeling a couple of weeks ago and now the feeling left me and you know if I see him I see him and if I don't I don't it's it's kind of like that way you know the difference between ha- having a sexual relationship with someone and then having some kind of uh relationship as far as bondage is concerned is for me it's two entirely different things because there isn't the sex involved it's more of a a, of a mental thing of a control thing of a worship thing of 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 idolizing me if you will you know of of having that control over someone you know whether it's making it's humiliating them whether it's spanking them whether it's whipping them and I found comfort in that and I think that was a thing that I had trouble with because when I saw it on TV it was something that or or rather when I read it in books because it wasn't on TV but you know when when you read it in books and, and people are talking about it and you hear about it my mind perked up it's like wait a minute there's something out there other than just having sex and this is where I found my little niche of where I personally got off and when I say that I'm not saying having an orgasm what I'm saying is is that it was thrilling for me I remember a while back I was I somebody was talking about I don't know if it was on Howard Stern or something like that where there were people who liked to have sex but didn't have the orgasm and they were happy with that. Oh, yeah. There's mm-hmm. some people like that, too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, uh, do you have any other qu- questions? Because we got some questions in the oh, chat no. room. Oh, no. Take them from the peanut gallery or okay. whatever we call them here. <laughs> yes. Dawkins Dog yes. asks, Maribel, do you think that the Christian tendency to make sex a taboo subject is actually a detriment to society because it mystifies it for teenagers? Yes. Absolutely. I don't think that sex should be 
hidden or not discussed. Um, I think the Pope had mentioned the other day that uh, you know, we shouldn't be focusing in on abortion and on gays and stuff like that. First of all, I don't even know how the Catholic religion or you know, the Catholic as a whole got stuck in all of this. I mean, aren't they supposed to be concentrating on worship their fake God? I don't, I don't know. But, mm. you know, they should not be involved. I, and, and that goes for any exterior organization. They should not be involved with the upbringing of other people's children. You should just be involved with your own upbringing. If a person decides to have a child and you are a parent, it is your responsibility to teach that child, um, to nurture that child, and not put them in a position where if you say, you know, if you play with yourself like God is going to punish you. Because that was like a big one. No, you're not supposed to do that to yourself because God is watching you and God is going to punish you. Yeah, that always and thought, then, it's like, know, I always thought, you know, that when people say that, it took me a few years after I became an atheist. Like, shit, if God's supposedly watching us, he's a fucking pervert. <laughs> 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 We're porn for God. Come on now. I mean, the, so, no, I, I don't I don't think that, that any religious uh, aspect should get involved at all I, I think it's it's the the parent's job and if you know if the parent is teaching the child and and putting religion in there well then then that's on them i think sooner or later once you get exposed to the world around you you're just going to have no other choice but to find things out on your own and that's you know that's what's going to happen you 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 as a you know as a child in in psychology you learn, you know, you learn the condition of how to brush your teeth and how to eat and, and how to do all of these things. And you're not immediately aware of the world around you until you become a, aware of it and you're introduced to the world and the world is introduced to you. And that's when you go on your journey of self-discovery. Very true, very true. We have another quick question from Your Damned. He's another host here on the show. He says, what are your thoughts on the differences and similarities of sex and intimacy? A spoken Venn diagram, if you will. Spoken and diagram. A, spo a spoken Venn diagram, you know, kind of paint a picture, as it were. Intersecting, in, in, a Venn diagram is two intersecting circles. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, you know, gotcha. Like, yeah, yeah, you're like, think, like this type thing here, you know, you get... Did I get that right? Yeah, I think so. Your Damned, yeah. So it's sex and intimacy, so, right? Sex right. and intimacy. What's the difference? Um, well, very simple. Does he want to answer? Does he want me to answer my own personal experience or just as general? I think just general. I think here uh, you just want your thoughts. So I'd imagine just your what are your thoughts on it. Your your opinion. Sex is just sex. I mean, you know, you can have sex with somebody and never see them again. Um, That's true. Intimacy goes on a, a deeper level you know you're getting to know the person you're you're experimenting with that person they're there you know you can't help but to have emotions and feelings involved I think the level of intimacy is when you start when you really start experimenting with with your partner and doing different things and developing a certain point of trust when you're having sex with somebody you know you're not thinking about I want to, you know, see what it feels like to stick my finger up his ass. I mean, you're you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about you just want to get off. You know, you want to mm -hmm. feel good. You want to have that orgasm, and then, you know, and then send him on his way. At right. least that's the way I would do it. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, the difference between yeah. intimacy and and uh, just sexual pleasure. I mean, or well. So, mm -hmm. so basically, you, you've in your mind, you've already separated out the sex from the intimacy. The intimacy for you would probably be something that, well, uh, more pers on a more personal level, where just sex is just you know That's going just going bang and then just be done with it. Just enjoy yourself and have fun, and then whatever happens after that, whether they leave and you never see them again, or you have sex with them again. That would be that. Then you can work into something that may become more intimate later on. If I've gathered that correctly. Well, yeah. I mean, again, it 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 depends on the person that that you're with. 
I mean, you know, I look at it from my own personal perspective. If I'm going to be intimate with somebody, I'm getting to know them and I'm inviting them in my life and, you know, um, I'm talking to them on a regular basis. I'm doing things with them and, and I, you know, they're becoming at one with me and vice versa. I, I think we're just sexual, sexual intentions, you're, you're just having sex with that person. I'm, I'm not saying that people that have, you know, have like a, a asexual partner, if you will, that they're not friends and they don't speak or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. Many years ago, I had a partner who I just had sex with, but we were also friends. And, you know, he would call me up. He's like, Hey, you want to get together? And I'm like, sure, why not? And we would get together and, you know, and that was that. But, mm -hmm. um, it never went anything more than that. I think when I think about intimacy, I'm thinking about that you're establishing some level of trust and relationship with this person, even mm -hmm. if you're not in love with them. I mean, love is an entirely different thing. Um, you're, you're, I, I'm looking at it as something, something different. Okay. Well, we got one more quick question, then we're going to have to cut out of here. We got one more question from your Dan. He says, if you could talk directly to teenagers of today, what would you want to say to them? Um, I would definitely tell them to keep their legs closed. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I think that teenagers today are extremely presumptuous about sexuality and what being sexy means, they, they are definitely different from when I was a teenager growing up back in the 80s. Um, we didn't have fake nails. We didn't have cut-off shirts. Um, we didn't have hair weaves. It, it was, you know, you, you were who you were, mm -hmm. and that was that. Uh, you, you didn't do anything different other than, you know, you put on horrible blue eyeshadow with uh, you know, with with white around the eyebrows, and you know, you wore fluorescent clothing, and um, and we didn't have cell phones. So. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Not everybody's sexting. No one else. Has, no one has to worry about catching anything unless they want to catch a virus yeah, on their phone. And, and, <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah, exactly. And what and 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 that's what I would say. And I would tell them to really take under consideration. I think this is the one thing that will always stay with me, and and it will probably answer a little bit of of Connie's questions that at the end of the day, it is your body mm -hmm. and it's your choice to say no. Right. Doesn't matter what that other person is saying. If they're not going to like you because you don't want to suck their dick or you don't want them to fuck you, that's okay. Keep it moving. Right. You will feel better about yourself at the end of the day because you didn't give in to somebody else's demands. Right. That's an entirely different thing from from the BDSM lifestyle. Right. And I would tell teenagers that you always have a choice. Yes. And never give in to somebody's demands because it's uh, it's not worth it. It's not going to generate or develop the self esteem that 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 kids think that they're going to find you know watching a lot of reality tv shows that depicts that if you have this certain lifestyle you know everybody's going to be kissing your feet right it just doesn't happen that way you know for a, for a lot of people for the majority of the people in this world real life is going out to work and you know paying the bills and 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 trying to survive you know for a lot of other people it's an entirely different thing um right. Yeah. And and people should definitely think about their decisions. And you know, it all stems from Sesame Street, people. If you watch Sesame Street, it it instills <laughs> in you what happens when you make a choice and what the outcome would be. I think just a lot of kids today are just doing things and they're not thinking about the outcome. They're just doing it because it feels good for that moment, the temptation, but they're not thinking about what's going to happen in the long run. Right. And this is why a lot of kids get in trouble today. 
Yeah, and they're not thinking of the, their consequences. No, exactly. That's the word I was looking for. Exactly. Right. They're not thinking about mm -hmm. the long-term consequences. So keep your legs closed because if you open it up under the guise that a guy is telling you that it's going to feel good, um, you can make babies that way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and make sure you – And but if, you, if you're going to make that decision, uh, take protection. You know, uh, wear a condom, be responsible. Exactly. Yeah, yeah so exactly. – uh, we're not going to be the ones to tell you you can't do it, but, you know, we're suggesting you not to. But anyway, I, Maribel, I want to thank you for joining us here on the show. And uh, you're welcome, of course, to come and join us in the chat room. or And we'll, we'll eventually have you back on the show again uh, as soon as we possibly can. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And yeah, Thanks uh, for coming. Yes, thank you very much yes. for coming. Uh, and not in that same way, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I had to go there. We've been You're talking still about on that Swedish beach. <laughs> Imagine the world having an orgasm all at once. Oh, I think we would shake the planet right out of the orbit. <laughs> I feel like that after every show. But anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, before we get out of here, if you want to contact us or if you want to make a donation to the show, uh, go to patreon.com. There'll be a link right here below. It should show up here in just a moment. Uh, it, it's patreon.com slash Packard Pokes. If you make a donation of a few dollars, that would great. That'd be helpful if you could, and then help keep the show going. Or if you make a $50 donation, uh, you can get a hat. Or uh, a, a donation of $100, you get a T-shirt. Or a $200 level, you get a sweatshirt. Or you can just go to CafePress.com and get the uh, nice mug that I've been using tonight. Not the same one, obviously, because I only have one. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they will make one for you. And this, these are really nice. These are they're, they're nice ceramic, and this is not just painted on. It's it's right in there, so you can put this in your dishwasher. I know I've, I've washed it several times. But anyway... If you would like to contact us in the meantime, we're going to give you all that information right now. Would you like to contact us? Your host, Packard Sonic, and his very honored and crazy co-hosts with occasional guest hosts enjoy your comments or suggestions. You can reach us 28 hours a day, 8 days a week on A Can on a String, Smoke Signals, Star Trek Communicator. Those may not work, but you can contact us on... Twitter as Packard Pokes at and by email at Packard Pokes at, at gmail.com. You can also listen and join in the conversation live Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time on vonlive.tv slash Packard Pokes at. You can find past shows on iTunes, YouTube, Mixler Radio, and Stitcher Radio. Help us out by rating, commenting, subscribing, retweeting, and reposting the show wherever you can. Click the like button on Facebook slash Packard Pokes at to join in the conversation. Would you like to help keep the show running and pick up some awesome Packard Pokes at merchandise? Visit cafepress.com slash Packard Pokes at today and buy hats, shirts, or one of over 300 other items that are also available. Visit PackardPokesAt.wordpress.com for links to the news articles covered tonight and more information on this or other episodes. We hope you enjoy the show. Thanks for listening and your support. And thank you, Joe. Wow, you, you, you're you still doing that really well. You still practicing that in the shower? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> A little reference to last week's show. Yeah. If you didn't see last week's show, you, you won't know what the hell I'm talking about. But anyway... <laughs> I've renamed my loofah Packard Sonic. Oh, <laughs> now I know I would begin that weird itch in, in the back of my neck now. Uh, <laughs> okay, I want to thank everybody for coming. And our, again, thank you to our special guest, Maribel Blue, for joining us here on the show. And we will be back next week at the same Packer time, same Packer channel. Until then, this has been Packer Pokes that we just poked at your news. And that's a wrap. <laughs>